So I get a lot of questions asking me, when do I start this for my garden in order to have the seedling ready on time? And that's a really good question. It's a lot of information, but it's a really good question. So I'm gonna try to cover that and we'll see how long that takes. <laughs> so the information that I'm going to be talking about today pertains to zone eight and nine, mostly zone nine A, zone eight B kind of, because that's the two grow zones that I have grown things in but you can probably kind of apply it to yourself depending on where you live based on the amount of rainfall you get and your minimum and maximum temperatures. And if you have any questions, just feel free to send me a message or comment and I'll try to answer your question. So here in zone 9A, we are blessed because we can grow certain plants year round. Those plants are lettuce and the brassica family. So broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale, cauliflower, cabbage, stuff like that. The only thing you have to watch out for is slugs really, really love them. And when we get so much rain here in the Pacific Northwest, you have to kind of watch out for that. So that's the one downside, but they can, and I have successfully grown these plants year round. On average, a lot of plants take about six weeks to germinate and get big enough or nearly big enough to transplant. So what that translates into for like broccoli and other things, if you want to plant them in the late spring and early summer, that way you avoid the really hot parts of summer and you can slow down the bolting, you know, when the broccoli will flower and go to seed. So here we have some broccoli and some cabbage that I started January 22nd. This broccoli was started March 7th. This broccoli here, I forgot to write the correct date on the tag. I wrote March 7th, but I think it was actually started in the middle of March, judging by its size. And this guy here was started March 26th. So you can kind of see the different stages that all the broccoli is in. So for your succession planting of broccoli, basically the stuff that was planted January 22nd, that's hardening off outside right now. That's basically ready to go in the ground as soon as I get around to it. So that I can probably expect a crop from, let's see, it's first part of April now, maybe May if I'm lucky. So this is going to vary a little bit depending on what kind of plant out of the brassica family you are growing, what variety. So for the broccoli, just basic rule of thumb for all the brassicas, it takes probably around three months, 12 weeks for it to be ready to be hardened off and then transplanted and maybe like another four to six to even eight weeks before you're gonna see like florets on the broccoli or the cabbage head to start to form, depending on what you're growing. So plants that you can start very early in the year. I started mine end of January, January 22nd. I planted a bunch of seeds and you can also probably go into February with this, but I wouldn't go too much further because these take a while to germinate like weeks some on some of them and they also take a while to grow so that is the nightshade family so peppers jalapeno bell pepper habanero serrano all the peppers eggplants tomatoes tomatillos all of that group some of which i start in a bag like i have another video that i'll link down here on that whole process. Another two videos now, actually. I don't normally start the tomatoes and the tomatillos in the bag because the seeds are just really small and they grow into the paper towels and it's really difficult to get them untangled. And I don't really have the issue starting them that I have had with the peppers. So January 22nd, my magical seed starting date <laughs> was when I started this jalapeno, which I'm gonna start hardening off like today, probably. And it was also the day that I started these eggplants. They're an Asian eggplant, if you're wondering. And what I got in here, Thai chilies over here. 
they were started around the same time. Thai chilies, they took forever to germinate. So I just learned a few years ago that start your pepper seeds early, start your nightshades early. You, you can get maybe some crops in June or July if you start them early. If you start them too late, like if you start them now, now that it's April, it's gonna be probably September, beginning of October before you see anything. And then with tomatoes, it's gonna rain. And then your plants are gonna get cold at night when it cools off with that water on it. And then they're gonna die. And it just shortens your growing season. The growing season around here is already short enough. So that's just doing yourself a huge disservice. <laughs> so I just wanna add, if you're gonna start plants from the nightshade family from seed and you are not using the bag method with the paper towel and I'm talking about like slightly faster germinating plants like like tomatillos mostly but kind of sort of also tomatoes depending on the variety these are tomatillos they were planted March 9th and I'd say they're pretty much right on track for what I want I have some other ones that are actually flowering and I haven't been able to get them in the ground yet that I planted January 22nd. So it's finally starting to dry up around here. It's, you know, the first part of April. So I think I could probably get away with putting them in the ground and having like a whole succession thing, which was kind of my experiment this year that I'll update you on later because I don't know yet how that's going to work out. But it might have been a little bit early I'm not sure we'll see we'll see if that works or if the plants just get too cold although I forgot about them last night I left them outside because I was hardening them off get them ready I was gonna bring them in I left them out there they didn't die so we'll see <laughs> so I am out here with my seedlings that I am hardening off which just involves bringing them outside usually during the day for a couple hours, then bringing them back inside and doing that until they stay out all night and then they're basically ready to transplant. That's the condensed version and I can do another video on that that's a little more in depth if you want to know about that. But these are the tomatoes that I started January 22nd. They are blooming. They're definitely ready to be transplanted. They are two pink Berkeleys and Aroma. Yeah, they're all they're all ready to go. These are the tomatillos that I started. Yeah, it's tangled. So these are very spindly, but that's just how they grow. But they are the tomatillos that I also started January 22nd. And I guess they're doing fine. They've got a little, little tomatillo trying to grow right there. I also started some tomatoes, both the Roma and the Berkeley, because that's what I'm growing this year. And I started them January 27th. These are the Roma and Berkeley tomatoes that I started January 27th. So a few days after the ones I started on the 22nd. I think that starting the tomatoes and the tomatillos around end of January, first two weeks of February is pretty good timing. And then probably if you want to do the staggering succession planting, probably you can do tomatoes, tomatillos through probably the middle of March, I want to say. Probably do that pretty safely, but I wouldn't go much past that or else you're going to risk running into the fall weather, ruining all your hard work by destroying your crops. So end of March, kind of beginning to middle of April, you can use spring break as kind of a reminder of this. That's the time that you want to start your corn and your squash. So basically things that take generally about six weeks before they're ready to be in the ground. I generally put my seedlings in the ground around Memorial Day, May 31st, kind of end of May. So stuff that takes about six weeks to be ready, which is definitely corn and squash. Also cucumbers, watermelon, loofah. That's something I'm growing this year. So it's on my mind, kind of random, but just stuff like that. You definitely want to make sure that you don't start any of your squash. And by squash, I mean cucumbers and, and squash, zucchini, yellow squash, anything like that. You don't want to leave those in the pot too long or corn. Actually, not all of these I just talked about. 
because I have actually grown baby corn by accident. The plant got very stunted. It started to tassel the corn, not the squash. <laughs> and I grew the cutest, most petite little ear of corn. And it was so condensed in flavor and delicious, but absolutely useless because I only had a couple of them and it wasn't even enough for a stir fry. But yeah, unless you're trying to go for baby corn, do not leave them in the pots too long. Same with the squash. I grew just like tiny, tiny little squash. So yeah, it was adorable, but not very useful. The plant was just stunted and not productive. It put on like two tiny little squash. I fed them to the ducks. <laughs> so this is a cucumber that I started March 26th. So it's just, it's adorable. And the, the squash are kind of in the same sort of stage. And the corn that I started March 26th is looking like this. Corn's pretty fast growing. So it's getting close to time to transplant. I'm excited. This is a zucchini that I started March 7th for a customer who just wanted an early crop, I guess. I don't think there's gonna be any issues with starting it this early, but you can tell it's definitely ready to go. I like to wait until late March, early April, so right now, <laughs> to start my root crops. And that includes carrots, potatoes, beets, radishes, all of that kind of thing. The stuff that grows in the ground. And the reason I do that now, even though temperature and whatnot is fine prior, is because of the amount of rainfall that we get here in the Pacific Northwest. I've just had issues with them rotting if I plant them earlier. So if you have like one of those covered... So if you have one of those like covered beds, then that's probably fine. You can probably pretty much almost grow them year round here. I have not tried it yet, but it's something definitely to try. So I mentioned that I pretty much get all my seedlings in the ground by Memorial Day, end of May kind of thing, May 31st. That's also when I plant anything that is directly sown. So seeds that I'm directly planting in the soil that I'm not starting from seedlings. So for me, that's like beans and peas and maybe even squash. I've had success just directly sowing squash. So obviously there are hundreds of different types of plants you can grow, different varieties of plants that you can grow, and they're all just a little bit different. So if you have a specific question about a specific plant, a specific type of that plant, <laughs> then just feel free to send me a message. Feel free to comment. I will research that. I think this is a pretty good general overview of everything, but do realize that it's going to vary a little bit depending on a lot of different factors. So that was a lot of information. I think probably the easiest thing to take away from all that is what I like to call the spring break rule. So basically what that means is that if it is spring break, so the penultimate, second to last, or the last week of March, then that's the time to start thinking about planting those seedlings that you haven't planted yet. And if it is, you can probably extend that into maybe even the middle of April, depending on the type of plant. But if it's past that, it's probably too late. And that there are some plants that you can start as early as the end of January, beginning of February. It just depends on the plant, depends on how long it takes before it's ready to go in the ground. But yeah, I usually start plants up until about spring break, beginning of April into March.